Did you know it's possible with a normal fiber laser to etch colors on brass? Nice colors to make it look like shiny silver or copper to get blues and grays and a whole range of awesome colors to spice up your engraving projects. In this video, I'll teach you the key things I've discovered to laser engrave or anneal some lovely colors on brass in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Corin Urquhart from Neuroc Tools. I know there are a lot of people who have come here just to get some settings. So here are some settings for a lovely pink color. Off you go, go and have a play. Right, now those people are gone and for the rest who actually want to understand this process, be assured of two very important things. Those settings do work, even though they don't appear to be working on the screen. And two, they do not work if you do not apply the first step. This is the Neuroc two-step process. Not only will I share the settings for many of the best colors I have found, but I will also share each step I use to produce what I produce. I will discuss surface preparation, post engraving surface treatments, and color longevity, preservation, and restoration. So let's talk about the material. Brass is brass, right? Well, no, no it's not. I work with brass a lot, like a real lot. Over the last 25 years, I've probably handled many tons of brass. According to Wikipedia, there are approximately 30 common alloys of brass in use, and I'm sure there are many, many more. Will my process work the same on the alloys you have? I have no idea, but I will tell you that it does work slightly differently on the two alloys that I use in my shop. Being alloy C26000, which is 7030 brass, and alloy C38500, which is free cutting brass or free machining brass. They're very common alloys, and if you use these, the process will definitely work. The laser. I don't know anything about your laser. I don't know if your laser is going to work. I do know my lasers are 50-watt fiber, and I've got a 100-watt MOPA fiber. I purchased both of my fiber lasers through Gamaco Artisan Supplies. So my 50-watt and my MOPA fiber laser, I see that they've got stock, and you can buy them from them today. They give excellent after-sales support. Talk to the team. Both lasers I have are purchased by this company, Le Leo Cheng Haotian Machinery Company. And I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Pascal and Bella. What a great company to deal with. They've supported their product along the whole way. Any issues we've had have been speedily resolved. And I will put their contact details on the screen because they know what you need if you want a laser that can etch brass if in the event that yours cannot. They know what I've got and they can sort you out. The settings that I'm giving you today are for a standard fiber laser. For a MOPA laser, you'll need to do some conversions. So how do you prepare your brass? Well, it's not critical for this application, but people ask me about that. So I actually blacken my brass pretty much all the time. I deeply blacken it with an Antica, so it goes almost jet black. It's a commercial antiquing compound that's available in Australia. I don't think it's available anywhere else in the world. I think there's products out there that do work in your location. Just find a brass blackening solution. I sandblast the brass and then I blacken it according to the directions on the jar and it produces a deep dark gray color out of solution. And this will go black later in the process when we coat it. And like I said, it's not critical to get the colors. You can just use scrap. You can use polished brass. You can use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The software well, my laser came with software called EasyCat. Some people call it Easy Crash. I now use Lightburn. It's a fantastic program. You can purchase it with a one-off purchase. You don't have to pay any monthly subscription. It works extremely well, and I'm very happy with the support that I've received from Lightburn themselves. So I highly recommend Lightburn. I have several lenses for my machine. I do everything on the 175 millimeter lens on both machines as that's the minimum size I can use to work on my usual projects. I, it also allows me to do 20 coins at a time, which is really quite handy. Focus is critical. Before you start, make sure your laser is in focus. Leave it in focus. Find a way to do everything you ever want to do with your laser in focus. It's that simple. Doing materials tests on brass to find these colors. Uh, online and from some manufacturers, you're gonna find laser colors for brass. I've not found any effective way to use them. They basically don't work uh, in any practically engraved brass application. When running materials tests on brass, you have to follow step one of this process as well. You can't just run a test, you're absolutely wasting your time as the pink demonstration at the beginning of this video would have shown. So Neuroc step one is engrave the brass. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much what I'm hiding here. All you do is engrave the brass. Get your laser on its most powerful brass 
eating setting. These are the settings I use on my 50 watt standard fiber laser. Run a single cross hatch pass at a line spacing of 0.02. You can run as many as you like, engrave a few millimeters into the brass, but you need at least one pass. And that's it, that's step one. All the colors I'm sharing today, just do that before you do them. For me and my work, the metallic colors are by far and away the best. These are the ones that look like copper, bra, silver, bronze. They're awesome. They give spectacular results. However, I have found that if you do more passes, the colors will change. And you'll see that. You'll see that the next pass comes through and the color changes. By the way, everything's in real time. I found some colors will only come out running slow. Um, and so do your own tests and find the best colors for you. But your res put your results in the comments. I'll definitely collate them for the laser community or eventually, I might not, I don't know, but they'll be there for, for people who want to ask. I'm sharing this to you guys. Please, if you find cool colors, please share them with me. I really appreciate you reaching out. Uh, you can contact me through my website uh, at Neuroc Tools, www.neuroc.com.au. Like you, I'm a maker. I make hand tools normally. I have some lovely tungsten carbide center punches that don't go dull and some nice tungsten carbide scribes. If you are a maker and you know makers, please let them know about my product, share my product with them. Uh, and um, if you use the code laserpaint, one word, you'll get free international shipping on any order that you purchase to show the support for what I do. And I really, really do jump on and have a look. I do some nice stuff, some really nice laser engraved stuff as well as handmade tools. So just jump on and have a look and, and by all means um, show some support. Laser colors look spectacular off the engraver. I mean, totally spectacular. But I don't think, and I stress, I don't actually know that they'll stay that way in time. What I do know is that I laid down my first colors about two months ago, and those original test pieces have been handled continuously. And using the following protective methods, so far so good, they've all faded to a stable point. After engraving, I use a clear coating product, like a lacquer, that I paint on my tools, and this gives them a protective coating from oxygen and stops the brass from tarnishing and oxidizing. The product I use can easily be wiped off with acetone and reapplied if the tool gets grubby or the surface coating gets damaged, and I recommend that you contact a specialty metal protection company in your area to find a similar product in your part of the world. Lastly, I don't know about any other materials except titanium. I've got some really great settings for titanium. I've won an award for my titanium engraving. It's a totally different beast, and I'd love to share that with you guys too. I'd like to thank everyone over at Next Level uh, Engraving Group on Facebook for all the knowledge that's shared there, and, of course, the team at Gamaco Artisan Supplies who bring in and support the lasers in Australia, and, of course, Hoatian Lasers who make them. They're great machines. They give great support and service. I highly recommend them. As poorly filmed and edited as this video is, I hope you got something from it and you'll like and subscribe to see more cool stuff that I do, if you're interested. Have a good day, night, or whatever it is, wherever you are in the world.